cool thank you so hello guys uh welcome to nz d365 finops teams session so we have uh we have a very exciting session by satya today which is the revenue recognition uh before we hand it over to satya for his awesome session i'll just very quickly give a bit of introduction about the group so this is nz d365 finops team uh group we started this group little late last year and uh, it has been quite uh, exciting time since then we have had lots of people who has joined us we have lots of sessions which are available with us so but on top of everything and anything we want to thank our volunteer speakers and especially our attendees who make these sessions and these events very successful we at the same time are also uh, requesting more people to join us as speakers as well so that we can widen our groups reach as well as we can share the knowledge so this group is primarily and only focusing on sharing the knowledge across the team members so any topics which comes to your mind for example power platform or data lake or anything which has anything to do with a slight tinge of uh, uh, association with dynamics finops we are very happy to have that session on to our group and host you guys uh we us uh, we have posted our groups onto you know multiple user groups site also like meetup and we have got a dedicated website which is shaping up pretty fast and we'll share that with you uh we have got uh, the whatsapp group we have got the linkedin group we are available on twitter also uh, all of these are uh, focusing on to having the reach to the wider audience with the content that we are putting into our channels every day so you can please follow and join us on there we are trying to build up our dynamics community in the anz region and across other regions as well slowly so this is uh you can uh, follow the qr codes to join us on to our uh, you know the linkedin uh, we have got quite a good number of followers in there uh, recently we have decided to let recruiters also help us post the jobs and even if you have some post positions available in your organization please feel free to you know post that on to this group but initially we are just focusing to let the jobs in ANZ region only be available on this because that is where we are initially focusing on so please feel free to join this please feel free to post the content in there as well as the job postings to help the wider community in the similar fashion uh, we are available on twitter and we have got our dedicated hashtags uh, with which we can if we'll be very happy and you know thankful if you can just tag us with the, your tweets uh, we have got extensive content available on our uh, youtube channel you can see that we have heaps of videos available uh, we have got you know it's not just the sessions video also people prepare their videos in their free time and we uh, they they send it to us and we uh, upload it onto our channel so you can see the qr code you can reach it up here or you can use the youtube anz d365 finops team this is the url for us you can click on that and you can you know subscribe to it we have got uh, quite a good quality content in there uh so with that uh we have our session revenue recognition by satya today and this is going to happen today and the final thing is uh one more exciting session coming up very soon which is on 24th of july uh it is by money maran it is on advanced warehousing with production module so with that i'll hand it over to satya please thanks vishal perfect Uh, can I share my screen, Michelle? Yes, please. Let me know if you can see my screen. It should be visible now. Yep, we can see it now. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. I believe some people are from other region of the world also joining today. Thank you very much for joining. let's start so first uh, a quick brief introduction about myself as uh, <clears throat> no my name is satyakejiwal 
many people in the group uh, know me already uh, personally. I've been into Dynamics since last uh, 15 years and worked with uh, uh, not many companies like employers, but definitely with uh, many clients so far in the last 15 years. So I worked in India, Philippines, Asia, US, UK and Australia. All right, so I'm based in Australia now in Sydney and uh, working uh, as an independent consultant. All right, so just before we start the session, I just like to know a little bit about uh, the audience. So there'll be quick poll after this. And just keep your phone ready. There'll be QR code. You can scan that and answer one question just to know uh, what kind of audience we have this afternoon. So my presentation is uh, customized or made basically for all kind of audience, not only finance session, though, though it's a finance topic, core finance topic, but I want everyone to get something out of this uh, session. So I would like to keep the concept very easy as well, and also try to cover the complexity of uh, this IFRS 15, basically, which is uh, this revenue recognition. So here you go. If you see the QR code after this, just let me know. So you can scan this. And there'll be one quick question. Uh, so how much you know about accounting? That's the question. People call me expert. Right, so generally people don't call them expert, but other people call them expert. Or started learning recently, so I'm a beginner, so I might be a developer, I might be let's say supply chain consultant. Or I just started recently, or I just want to learn more about finance. Very good, we have seven votes so far. We'll keep it open for just uh, another one minute. Right, so we have pretty much mixed kind of audience. Definitely more started learning recently. That's fine. Okay. So yeah, let's proceed. So I'll try my best to keep the concept simple. I'll start from very basic. Right, so this session is about the revenue recognition. So this uh, topic or this module in D365 is a pretty much new. Um, it's not that new, not re launched recently. It's a kind of uh, one year or one and a half years old. So I had one session uh, last year as well in um, Australia user group in last February. So I know like it's not that new as well, but people still don't know about this much. So I've seen recently a lot of people have customized the system for, for similar requirements. So that's why I always um, recommend people to go uh, to check uh, what new modules are coming up. So there are like five, six new mod brand new modules, which really meets a lot of requirements of the users. Right, so who needs to follow revenue recognition? What kind of industry, what kind of businesses? So I would say almost everyone in the world, all the company need to follow revenue recognition to some extent. So for example, Apple, Apple selling a mobile phone. With mobile phone, they also sell warranty, right? So they sell one year, two year, three years warranty, extended warranties, 
right? So revenue recognition will be applicable for any company who are selling warranties, right? And and you can see like any company who sell product, they sell warranty as well. Plus, take example of Netflix or any uh, company which are selling the subscription. So they sell yearly subscription. So when they sell yearly subscription, they charge the money up front and they amortize, they need to amortize the revenue throughout the year. So that's the perfect really fit for those organizations. All right, so that's the example again from, uh, I don't know whose plan was that, is it was Amazon or uh, Netflix. So 139.95 per year or annual plan, right? So, so they charge you this much upfront. So th that's from your point of view, they charge you this much, but from their point of view, they need to amortize their revenue throughout the year. So we'll see how, how it works in system. Right. Okay. So now whatever kind of consultant you are, like you are developer or you are like supply chain consultant, your solution architect. One thing you should know always is what are the use cases of a module? Even if you don't know the detail, uh, but if somebody asks, okay, can we do that in this product? So you should be able to say, yes, I think we can do it using this particular feature or the module. Right, so so this slide is the uh, the most important slide of uh, this session, I would say. Like where we will discuss, okay, only like these scenarios will be covered by revenue recognition model, even if we don't discuss everything in this session. So if you see uh, coffee machine with extended warranty, this this is my example actually in the demo. Seems like there is some lag in the session. I'll switch off my video. There is some lag. Right, so very simple scenario will be services. Company selling the services like software license, right? Or, or these um, Netflix or Amazon kind of companies who are selling the yearly subscription and they charge your front and amortize it for the whole year. That's a, uh, the basic example of this um, module, right? Second example is companies uh, who are selling product with the services, right? So iPhone, uh, Apple selling the iPhone with the warranties, Harvey Norman selling the TV washing machine with extended warranty or normal warranty as well. Right, uh, coffee machines from let's say Breville. Right, so we will take um, one coffee machine from Breville. Basically, uh, that's the project I worked on recently. And uh, there is one case where we there are software resellers who sell services or software, which is basically the first case. But there is also a back-to-back -back purchase order behind that. So it means there will be a cost of goods sold behind those uh, uh, sales, right? So these are the use cases which I'm aware of right now, but there might be more um, like uh, we can uh, chat about that uh, after this session. Right. <clears throat> Revenue recognition model as per IFRS 15. So what, what is the uh, IFRS 15? So we don't need to know too much in detail about IFRS 15. So it's, it's a kind of like core accounting, um, like accountants generally go in detail of that, but how system can support it and what are the major highlights what we uh, from IFRS 15, at least we should know uh, those things. So in the document, in the IFRS 15 document, there are five steps uh, as you can see here, but again, we don't need to go in detail here. What's important for us is uh, always in one transaction, there can be different performance obligation, right? So let, let's go through that one by one. So I, I think that will be easy. So there's a contract, you're selling coffee machine with the warranty. Then in that case, there are 
two performance obligation. One is the machine, another is the warranty, and warranty lasts for one year, right? So that goes month to month for next 12 months, right? So then you separate the warranty with the from the product. Step three, determine the transition price. How much is the warranty? How much is the uh, main product, right? So you separate the the price of uh, both the things, right? Even if you're selling it together, you can't be separated. But uh, from revenue recognition perspective, you need to separate it. Allocation transaction price to each performance obligation. It means if you sell those products separately, how much that price will be? Right. So I'll come to that concept in detail. Then recognize revenue when performance obligations are satisfied means Satya, sorry to interrupt Satya. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm not seeing the right slide. I'm not sure if other guys are seeing that. I'm seeing revenue recognition use cases. Oh, yes, for me also. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No, I can see the right one. I can, I can see the right one. Can you see the step. five models? Yeah, five steps. Yes, I can. I can. Yeah. 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 All right, continue then. Yeah, I'm not there seeing some that. Lag. Yeah, not I a problem. There's some lag. No worries, Satya, continue. Okay. Okay, so the so performance obligation. Um, okay, th this is a bit overwhelming here for non accountants, but I, I'm sure this will be very clear um, after a few slides. Okay, so last step is this is basically you can say this is the accounting piece when you post the sales invoice, then how much revenue you, you will recognize it is that step. Okay. Okay, let's jump to yeah these five steps and how it relates to our system. Okay, step one, identify the contract. So contract means you you can you create the sales order. That's that's what my contract is like with the customer, right? Identify performance obligation. I so I add the products in the sales order. That's my uh, that's my performance obligation, product and services. And you can see here, this bundle is a new concept. Again, like many people may not be aware about this bundle concept. This is like a bomb. So you can create a bundle and attach multiple products within that bundle, right? And each price, each item can have its own price. Okay. Uh, deal price, that's also a new concept. And then allocation of the prices, right? Allocation of the prices through the bundle items. Uh, that's what also we define uh, this a new thing. And there are some new posting profiles. Okay. Um, there are new, uh, there are two new security roles introduced uh, for this module. And the new concept, as I said before, bundling concept, revenue price, which is called fair market value. That's a technical name as per IFRS and deferred revenue. This module will be visible only through license configuration that has to be enabled. And then you will see this uh, new module, revenue recognition. Um, it many of the screens um, in this module will be uh, different from other modules. So let's say sales orders, all projects, but just for convenience, they have given this uh, under this module. <clears throat> right. Okay. <laughs> Can you please stop and reshare your screen? Because I'm still seeing the same, oh, same slide. Okay. Yeah, can you right. please try? Okay. Is it so happy much. for everyone? No. No, I can see. I can see all correct. No, no. <coughs> I can also see all the right now. Yeah, that's fine. Let me try again. How is it, Nitesh? Not yet. Maybe what I will do, I will drop and rejoin. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Okay.
I can't see Satya. Okay. Was it Sumit? I cannot see the slides again. Yes, sir. Take you please. Wait, okay. Let me share your screen. Yeah, okay. All right. I can see the bundle of products now. Yeah, I can see. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's visible now. All right, so guys, I'm just going through a few slides. After that, we'll jump into the system and uh, uh, see it live. One one scenario, which I said before, uh, the coffee machine. That scenario we will run um, using one example. Okay, so just uh, go through the new concept, new screens, right? In a few slides. Okay, as I said, uh, bundle, which is a new uh, concept. That's this checkbox has been. Uh, added on uh, the product master. Okay, so when you say it's a bundle, you can it's a, like a bomb. You can uh, for all the bomb all the bundles you can create multiple uh, like one bomb version and add multiple lines. Right. So in this example, you can see printer and one uh, printers one year uh, service. Right. So basically, you will be selling the bundle means printer with services. Okay. All right. Second concept is uh, again on the item master, you will define the revenue price. Okay. So revenue price, you can assume that this is the price which is uh, I call fair market value means if there is no discount running or no promotion, nothing. Any a reasonable person, how much will he charge to the uh, like any known relative, right? Fair market value is like I'm selling to any unknown person, then uh, this is the price I'll charge in general, right? So that's price. That's the price to capture. On um, again, it's on the item master under sale tab. Few posting profiles under the sales posting. Right, deferred revenue. So that's the main concept. So you are deferring your revenue for um, and uh, recognizing it every month. Right. So this is our scenario for today, um, which we'll see in the system. So Contoso Retail selling a coffee machine. Uh, and guys, if you have any question, feel free to ask me even now uh, during the session, or you can ask uh, later as well. Okay. Uh, Contos Retail selling a coffee machine. The the price is seven fifty, right? And this comes with a one year warranty. So it's a bundle product. We charge this much to the customer. Additional warranty for one year can be purchased at seventy nine, right? So that's the example. So if your customer buys this uh, uh, product with this uh, warranty, we will charge eight twenty nine. Right, that's the so we we need to create a bundle for this uh, product with this service. Right now, revenue price, which I said a new concept, fair market value. If I sell this product separately, I will sell it for seven hundred. This machine, right? And, and if I sell this service or this warranty separately, then I'll charge one fifty. So you can see there is a little bit of. Uh, 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 like confusion, like you will ask, why will I charge 700 while it is showing 750 here, right? So this is a kind of uh, uh, accounting practices going on um, in the industry just to recognize less revenue sometimes, right? So people were recognizing uh, 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 more revenue here. Uh, 750 and uh, amortizing 779 right for the future but why uh, while they should have recognized 700 and amortize 150 for the next 12 months right so that's the like concept of fair market value so you will see in, in this example that when we post the sales invoice instead of this 750 there will be almost 700 like that will go in my revenue account Okay, not exactly 700, but you will see that calculation. Okay, so what we expect 
uh, what is the like expectation of IFRS is identify the right allocation for product and services as per fair market value. As I said, like there'll be right allocation. Revenue should be recognized as per performance obligation. Right. So again, performance obligation is the key word in IFRS 15. So in this example, when we sell a product, my performance obligation is complete as soon as I sell the product. But for the services, because it lasts for one year or two years, whatever is uh, my contract. So I need to recognize revenue in that spread. OK, so my performance obligation goes month to month. OK, end to end cycle. Uh, I'll not go through slide here. Let's jump to the system. So we'll start from sales order and uh, we we have a question. Uh, if you are happy to take it now on the way, it is pertaining to the previous slide. Satya, mm -hmm. uh, the question is from Ludwig. It's about how and where do you get the revenue prices, which is the fair market values? Yeah, OK, that's a good question. Um, in IFRS, they they say like there can be different source fair market value. Like if you sell that product uh, separately, right? How much will you charge? That can be fair market value. Or what is the price what other sellers are charging for that in the market? That can be fair market value as well. Right? So they can be different source. Again, it's up to you. You it's uh, your responsibility to prove to the auditors that yes, this is a fair market value. There is no uh, hard and fast rule. OK, let me okay. leave that to answer the question. Yeah, right. So I'm creating a sales order. This is my customer. Vishal, sorry, uh, how much is that time? How much is the like total duration? So we are approximately halfway through now. 30 more minutes to okay. go. Okay. I'll speed up a little bit then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So you see, I had these three four products. The last line here is my um, bundle product, right? In this bundle, I had this uh, one year service and this the main product, this coffee machine. Okay. I select this bundle. My selling price, which is 829, comes up. Right. Now, as soon as I confirm this order, you will see some magic. See this. There are two more lines. Right, the first line quantity gets zero. Disappears and there are two lines which are basically the the components of this bundle, my main machine, coffee machine and the service plan. And what else you see here is. There's a unit price, individual prices of these products. Right, and there is also revenue schedule. So revenue schedule, which I define and attach to this item. So in this revenue schedule, I'm saying that this $79 should be amortized in next 12 months. I need to recognize this in next 12 months, right? So if I click here, that's how I define revenue schedule. Okay, like 8.33% per month, right? So you can define two years, three years, whatever you want. And there's also option to um, uh, define that I want to recognize on the very on the first day of the month, or I want to uh, start like go from today and and uh, recognize every tenth of the month, right? So those options are there. Um, now, what else we can see? Yeah, at this stage, you'll see there's a new tab uh, under the manage uh, tab. There's a new options uh, for the revenue recognition only. One is 
expected revenue recognition schedule. So it will say how much revenue will be recognized for next 12 months, as I was showing you before the schedule. So it is 4.66 per month, right? And then revenue price allocation. So on this concept, I will come uh, in a while um, through Excel sheet. It will be easy to explain. Okay, let's let's pick back and invoice this order, and then I'll come back to the Excel to explain some accounting. <clears throat> so I'm now creating the delivery note. Michelle, there are a few people in the lobby, I think. And creating the invoice. Okay, this is invoice now, and that's the voucher. And let me export this in Excel. Right. Uh, the file crashed. Okay, so I'll come back to this file. Before that, let's uh, go to our original example. Yeah. Okay, in my example, um, we had the 750 and 79, uh, the individual price of those products. This is my selling price charging to the customer. That's my fair market value. Now, key concept here is that uh, this 829 should not be recognized in this ratio. It should be recognized in this ratio, 700 and 150, which is my fair market value. Right? Again, this is a little bit uh, complicated uh, concept here. Like some people, some companies might say, now nah, my fair market value same as this. So we will not go in this allocation piece, right? Otherwise, uh, like that, then in that case, the concept will be a little bit uh, easier. Okay, in, in our scenario, what we are doing is, we are allocating this uh, 829 into uh, this ratio, uh, 0 0.82 and 0 0.18, okay? And that's how it will be uh, distributed. So I'll come back to our accounting. And let's open that Excel. Okay. All right, so deferred revenue, you can see what I'm charging to the customer, which is account receivable domestic. This is my AR side. And uh, this is my product sale, which is the main coffee machine. And that's, that's my, that's my services, my uh, warranty. So you can see it's not hitting the revenue count, rather it goes to a deferred revenue, right? So that, that's the main concept of this whole module. That's the crux that this service is not going to revenue account, it's a balance sheet account, okay? So now what happens after this? How should I recognize this revenue? So I'll go back to my sales order and see revenue recognition schedule. Right, so before this, it was a expected revenue recognition schedule, but after I invoice, it goes into um, like confirmed schedule. Now you can see here that $55 has been 
put into 12, uh, 12 lines, like 4.66 per month, right? Now there's a bad job every month you can run and uh, that will recognize by it, uh, like itself. But here I can show you how to do it manually. So I select uh, one line and click on create journal. One transaction now uh, there in journal number 651. Right, so there's a new type of journal created for revenue recognition module under um, journal tab, which is this. So my journal was 651, 651. And you see the accounting. Now this deferred revenue is debited and now it credited to my income account, right? Product sale. Okay. Which I can post, I can like set up the batch job. So it is not manual, it, uh, batch creation, batch posting, all can be automated. Okay. Now, as soon as I post it, if I refresh, the voucher number will be visible here. Okay, and uh, so I, I covered this. I said we will come back to this allocation piece. Um, so allocation is, uh, again, this is the allocation as per the fair market value, right? What we are charging to the customer is list price 750 and 79. But my allocation price of the fair market value was 750. Now, this uh, this price is allocated in this ratio to this amount now, 773 and 55. So 55 I am amortizing in one year. Instead of amortizing the 79, I'm amortizing 55, right? So, that, so that, that's the magic of fair market value. That's called allocation as per the revenue price, allocation price, okay? Right, so do you have any questions so far? How and where do you get the revenue price? I think I, I answered this one. What's the next? The customer wants to upgrade to a better or new coffee machine. After being five months into the 12 months contract, how can this be handled? So Ludwig, are you saying that uh, Upgrade means he'll be returning back this uh, old machine, so they'll. So this we need to close this contract, right? And create a new sales order. Yeah. I I believe this can be done. I'm not sure uh, what is the way, but definitely it can be done. I don't remember where that option. Can I get back to you on this? Because this is uh, this is a pretty uh, like basic scenario again, like kind of reversal of the schedule or closing the schedule, premature schedule. Okay, next question. Does this work with dual write from D365 sales to FinOps? If order originate in sales. So sales means the CE, right? See, I'm not sure this is, uh, again, dual right is a new concept. Not everything is there. Um, I don't have very good experience so far with dual right. But I, I'm very apprehensive that it will be there. But as, he, as far as, uh, because this is a normal sales order. When you sell, create a sales order, you just need to show this bundle on the sales order, right? So if in CE you have these products, I think that should be fine because this splitting or this exploding of the line is happening in FinOps or f &O. So I don't see there will be any problem. If you want, like this should be again synced back to CE in this, um, 
as a three lines, I think that should also be possible. I, I, I don't see that should be a challenge. If you're generating the sales order in CE and sending it here for uh, invoicing. Because it see it doesn't there there is a concept of uh, kitting I think kitting as well in CE which like works a similar way, but I'm not sure if that is in sync with this. Yeah, uh, more questions. Return sales order concept will be functional if the goods or services are not accepted by the customer. We shall. That's the question, right? Yeah, that's that's a question. Please, thanks. The goods or services are not accepted by the customer. Uh, we shall. Can you explain this question, please? Yeah, sorry about a little noise from my side. So the question is uh, if uh, let's say that, uh, you know, you give this espresso machine as well as the service and the customer says that either the service uh, is not up to the standard of the organization uh, and we don't want to continue with that. They mm. may want to keep the product and they may not want to keep the, uh, you know, machine itself. So can we create the return sales order for the physical goods and uh, can we create the return order for the service item? Uh, it is related to it, it can also be you know used as right of functionality for the balance amount. Mm, yeah. So you are saying they want to return the machine, which will essentially be the return of everything, right? And service yeah. need also need to be cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. So I, actually, I think the similar question what uh, Ludwig Ludwig was also asking. Right, if you uh, like, if you return it or you want to upgrade, I think uh, technically it will be the same thing. We still need to create the return order, okay, and create a new sales order, okay. In a way, like okay. in Ludwig scenario, you need to create a new order. You are saying return it and uh, not buying the new one. So sure. um, I, I, I'll, I'll get back on this. Uh, like creating the return order will. Reverse this schedule or cancel this schedule, or they, if there is some other way. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, what's the next question? <laughs> Rohit is asking, what if fair market value is defined? Will it take the sales price and use same ratio as the mandatory field for this functionality to work? Yeah, that's a good question, Rohit. Uh, that's not a <clears throat> mandatory field. So if you know revenue price is defined, it will take uh, the the normal sales price. This again, as I said, fair market value is not is a kind of vague, very subjective thing. So uh, so not many companies might uh, have that. Okay. Okay, Ajay, Revrec, how it works in credit note is generated against. Uh, 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 again, I need to get back on this. How it works for the credit note. I'll just open my slide where we talk about different scenario, like the use cases. There is an option to update the contract where you can retract the remaining schedule to one or zero month if there is a cancellation kind of scenario. Yeah, that's a, a good point, Pankaj. I'm I'm not sure if that can be linked to the return order though. Uh, you're right. You can update from the schedule itself. Relocate uh, price with new order lines. I think this option can be used to some extent. <clears throat> OK, 
can we change the revenue schedule in middle of the sales order? Yes, it can be changed, Meng. So this option is uh, visit. I think can be accessed from the allocate price in the order lines. Update reallocation. We can do that. Or no, uh, your question is example is that for service management, any use case for TNM RevRec? TNM uh, RevRec, uh, Arnab, can you explain uh, exactly what type of industry or uh, scenario you're talking about? For time and material, uh, RevRec is uh, like by itself is uh, like compliant with the uh, like accounting standard. Whenever you are giving the services, you are charging the revenue. So if you can explain uh, a little bit further on the scenario, I can help. Rohit, is this ratio also applied to Cox? I believe Cox booking would also be the effort for such lines with revenues schedule. Yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, uh, that's um, that's one of the feature or like if you remember in the posting profile, I was showing them more. Posting profile related to Cox, this one. <clears throat> so deferred cost of goods sold that so that that also works or uh, goes hand in hand with uh, your deferred revenue. Okay, I think uh, read that answer is a question. I'll go back to my scenario slide. <clears throat> so Rohit, uh, this this uh, this is the exactly same scenario I mentioned here. Software for the software resellers, where you need to create the back to back uh, purchase orders. Then you will have that cox that that will be amortized together. Um, are there any reports? Sorry. No, th thank you, Satya, for clarifying that. Thanks. Are there any reports? Some little which shows posted in pending recognition at legal entity level and not just. Uh, yeah, definitely there are reports. I haven't run it. I haven't seen it yet, but I believe there are reports, inquiries, reports, revenue recognition inquiries. So there seems to be inquiry screens, which sh uh, shows the. Uh, uh, like all the revenue sched schedule for all the customers. So definitely you can uh, build the reports out of it. Out of it. OK. Darshan, the, that answers the question. Yes, yes, sir. That, that answers the question. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, yes, these are the questions we have currently, Satya, on the chat. So uh, yeah, I'll, I hope that if we have more questions, we can answer these right now. We have got 10 more minutes to go. We can still wait. No worries about it. And clearly we have got some takeaways from this session, Satya. And uh, as soon as we get these answers ready, we'll post it onto our social platforms. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, cool. Guys, uh, the floor is open. Please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, you know ask the questions. Anything which we can't answer, we'll take it away and we'll get back to you. Hi, this is Adnav here. I just wanted to ask that this this session has been recorded. We find uh, where we can find it in the social media platform. 
Yes, so okay. we have got uh, the recording uh, is happening and we will post the recording onto our YouTube channel. So you'll find the details on our groups, LinkedIn groups, YouTube channel, Twitter platform everywhere. So I'm just pasting a YouTube channel link over here. So please. Uh, can I was about to say that. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks. I was about to say that. How to reach that YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you. Yes, we are. It's, uh, it's more here. I have a quick question. Um, so um, is there any, is, is, it, is it this revenue recognition parameter is specific? Like for example, if I'm having a project module in place, that project module also creates a sales order and we have a revenue recognition scenarios um, in project yeah. module itself. So yeah. my question is like, is, is it something that parameter controlled or if I create a project sales order and then um, the revenue recognition is happening over there and in this module as well? No, so this is totally linked to the sales order. And if you are getting sales from sales order from any screen, it applies to like every scenario because all the controls are on the product master. Sure, right, so thanks. If you remember quickly, I can show you. <clears throat> Hey, hey, Satya. Hey, this is Ashish. Yeah, Ashish. Yeah. Hey, hey, sorry I missed your session, uh, but I have one question uh, sure. for related to revenue recognition. So it, this uh, revenue recognition module, does it have uh, this uh, amortization report? Like uh, we can check the current month and uh, the remaining amortization? Yeah, I just covered that, uh, Ashish. Uh, there is an inquiry oh, screen. Covered. There's an inquiry okay. screen, uh, revenue recognition inquiry, which like you can build report uh, from there. But it shows you um, all the amortization which are uh, like even um, booked or recognized so far, or which are like uh, futuristic as well. Oh, okay. everything is here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the question before that was uh, like uh, so sales orders which comes from any source, even from the project. I think that that will not matter because my control is on the product master. So I can quickly go on the product master and show you. Um, I touch uh, briefly initially that uh, the few new options on the product master you can see here revenue, revenue recognition. So on that service, which is uh, like to be um, uh, recog recognized or amortized in the next one year, then you link your revenue schedule on the product. Sure, that answers the question right. because like if you do that, then it will take this. Otherwise, it will go through project. Thanks, thanks right. for that. Yeah. yeah. So if if your scenario is very simple that uh, that i have service netflix kind of service that runs for one year i'm charging up front you just need to link this revenue schedule you don't need to create any bundle or anything just that item and link the revenue schedule you're done right so if the scenario gets more complex like this bundle plan then you need uh, this uh, like machine with warranty, machine price, fair market value can be different from this, then you have all the complications, right? Otherwise, just one like service item, then create uh, link the revenue schedule, that's it. In second scenario, you need this revenue allocation active as well. You need to uh, like define the essential, essential um, item or non-essential item, like it, use, it is used in some calculation in the background. All right. Most of the time, maybe you are you are good with the just revenue schedule. OK, uh, like one of uh, our client use this as well. This gets uh, a little bit more complicated because you're using the uh, coax as well. And generally for uh, services, you don't use the coax, right? But because there was like it was a software reseller, they were creating back to back purchase orders. So Cox was there in, uh, in, in the picture. <clears throat> okay, so th these are the new options here and uh, fair market value is also uh, set up on the product master. 
uh, which under revenue prices. So again, everything is on the product master. Uh, Satya, can you quickly show the bomb setup as well? How you did that? Yeah, sure. Um, so bomb. First thing we need this uh, checkbox bundle again, a new uh, new feature. After that, it works like a normal bomb. Right, uh, the way you do normal bomb. Yeah, you create a thank bomb, you, bomb version and and uh, link these two items. Right, sir. that's thank my you. machine. That's uh, my service. Right, thank you. Okay, welcome. <clears throat> okay, guys, if there's no more question, then um, maybe shall we can uh, conclude this? Yes, I think, yeah. Uh, uh, I think can I ask a question, Sudhir? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, about uh, this sales of bundles, right? Is there any linkage where we can use this with the retail point of sale, say MPOS or CPOS? Because generally, coffee machines, you know, there are uh, mm -hmm. boutiques, right? We sell such items with the subscriptions or your, you know, the extended yeah. warranty. Is there any I, linkage out of the box? I, I, I'm not sure, but I read on um, Microsoft Docs that it is it doesn't work with uh, I think uh, e-commerce. I'm not sure about the retail. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but e-commerce there was a like big uh, uh, warning there when you open this Microsoft Docs. The e-commerce at least it doesn't work. Okay. Thanks. No worries. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Last call for the question. So not a question, uh, Vishal, uh, just a comment here from my side, Faisal here. So thank you so much, Satya, uh, for your time and for your efforts today uh, for the community. So I have pasted all the YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter accounts for the ANZ uh, Dynamic 365 FinOps teams. So all the recordings will be there. So please do subscribe there and also you can follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. So all the links are in chat window. So thank you again. Yeah. No, thanks, it was Pleasure. great session. Thanks a lot, Satya. And mm -hmm. thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us, giving your time. Have a great weekend ahead. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It was a really thank good you, session. Thank you, Satya. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.